I grew up in, um, we call it in Canadian terms, a redneck town, Milton, Ontario, approximately 31,000 people. Um, it was uh, predominantly white people, um, not too many minorities living in Milton. I grew up um, in a nominally Christian family, went to Sunday school till I was about six years old, and uh, from there didn't really talk about religion other than Christmas and funerals. And um, growing up, I guess going through high school and school, it, we're just talking about girls, how many girls you can sleep with, um, you know, what you're going to be when you get older in terms of like um, uh, if you're going to be a rock star or you're going to be um, some rich millionaire. Actually, it didn't really matter as long as you had lots of money. So I grew up with a goal in mind of gaining as much material wealth as possible and uh, having sex with as many women as I could find and um, basically not respecting anything except for status and wealth and, and it didn't matter how you achieve that. But I was basically a godless um, human being. I mean, obviously there was something there, but I had never explored and, and asked any questions or really not wanted any answers. I just wanted to consume from society. I went from being basically agnostic and not knowing anything, and I hit a point where I was I was a compulsive gambler, and um, I lost about a hundred and hundred and twenty thousand dollars in approximately four years at uh, the new casinos when they first uh, opened up and I hit a low point because I was falling in so much debt personal bankruptcy and just I was a mess and um, I hit a low point in life and I, I was con contemplating committing suicide thinking there was no other way because I was broke and um, from there I just decided that maybe there's an alternative way of life that I could find that would bring me inner peace and I ended up falling upon Christianity because that was the roots that I knew of. And I started reading the Bible and going to church and actually buying the New Testament on audio cassette, talking to pastors of both Catholic and Christian uh, ministries, and uh, soul searching. And what happened was I found that, um, you know, my nature told me there's a God and God is perfect. And um, I started trying to follow the Ten Commandments, which would come from the Old Testament. And um, one of the first commands commandments are, you shall have no other gods before me. And the second commandment uh, is, um, you shall not make an idol of yourself. And I, I found the Jewish were finding God before them by worshipping money. And I found the Christians were making an idol of Jesus, peace be upon him. And before Jesus came, um, that commandment came. So I said that it was obviously the fact that uh, those Ten Commandments preceded Jesus, peace be upon him, then they were obviously um, the solid foundation of rule. And uh, it was obviously the people's misinterpretation of who Jesus really was, peace be upon him, that led me to decide that he was a prophet and the son of God in a metaphoric way, but not in a literal way, obviously. Not believing in a God that has genitals or a God that has a human form or any form or any likeness to his creation. I actually stopped drinking alcohol, I stopped doing drugs, and I stopped fornicating with women. And I found that spiritually enlightened. And what happened was I walked into a Becker store one day and, and not knowing really if Christianity was right, but just it's kind of like there's a ship you're on and you know there's faults in the ship, but you don't see any ships around you. So I'd never been exposed to Islam before and I walked into a Becker store one day, July 9th, 1998, and uh, a brother, a Palestinian brother, Hossam Taha, looked at the cross on my neck and said, that, that guy's not your savior. And at that point, I mean, I, I'd never heard anything else, so I thought I could win the debate. I said, I'll come back and I'll debate him and convert him to Christianity. So after three days of debating him and two other brothers, after never hearing about Islam before, I just, I knew right away it was the truth, and I accepted it. And um, it was, it's like that. I grew up in mathematics, and two plus two is four. And as soon as Islam came in my life, it was, there was no use denying it. I had already, ha always had a personality of somebody who, went against the grain, but, and that's just because I like to stand for justice. And when I heard about Islam, it was the truth, and there was no use denying it. In fact, it was a, it was a relief, actually, to embrace such a beautiful religion. In Christianity, I mean, I was still hang, uh, hanging out with guys who were snorting coke and smoking drugs and drinking a lot of beer. And so I was considered the saint because I was the designated driver. But what I found with when I became Muslim was I started to seek people who were better than I was instead of seeking people who were worse than I was so I could justify that I was 
maybe a saint or a great human being. So what Islam did was humble me as a human being and as I continue to learn about Islam and, and practice Islam, I realize the more I know, the less I really in reality do know because the knowledge that I've gained has enabled me to humble myself to realize that this religion is so vast that you never stop learning. You're always a student of knowledge. So whereas Christianity had its limitations in that, I thought I was automatically a good human being when I did those things. And there wasn't really um, any sort of teachers left to teach you all those humble teachings and to live them and, and live them out. But um, the biggest thing that changed was my concept of God. And that's really why I left Christianity, is uh, the concept of God being one of three or, um, or even God literally having a son. I mean, these things could never sit right in my heart. I mean, math, I was playing Euchre. You know, there's a card game called Euchre. A lot of people were playing it in high school. They had me in those special classes, and I was playing it in grade three. So in grade three, I was, you know, trumping cards with, uh, with Euchre. So math was always my subject. So I was always a rational thinker. I just never come across Islam, probably due to my ignorance and my arrogance, but by the mercy of God, um, he guided me to the truth. I, I accepted Islam on my father's birthday. So they had come back from vacation, and the first thing I told them was I became a Muslim. And, I, you know, quite honestly, I never knew my parents had even heard of Islam. Like, I mean, from my parents' perspective, this is the way they thought about things. And my family at large, they said, this man, he used to drink, he used to do drugs, he used to party, he used to fornicate, he used to uh, gamble, and used to be a really disrespectful human being. And now he's changed his life completely. How can we say the devil made him do it? How can we, we really argue the, the results of the, the way you've changed? And so generally I didn't have too many problems. I had the odd person make comments. But really, I mean, I became a believer in God and it didn't really matter to me what the reaction was because all I cared about was God, what God thought of me, not what they thought of me. Exploring and it is an ongoing process until God, Allah, commands that to stop. But and I encourage everybody to continually strive for that inner peace. This feeling that I have inside of me, I want to share it with others. And sometimes some people are willing to uh, embrace that in Islam, in Islam. And even if it doesn't come through Islam, just our example to non-Muslims, we can show what we are all about. And Alhamdulillah, that my goal is to, is to share that little light that Allah has given me with others.